One of the first things to do when you get a mill is decide how to hold the cutting tools in the spindle. And in my opinion, there are a lot of bad options. Choosing the right tool holding will not only make the machining experience better, but you'll produce more accurate parts. Choosing the wrong tool holding can be a frustrating and expensive road to go down. So in this video, we're going to go through all the different ways you can hold an end mill in an R8 spindle, and we'll talk about why some options are better than others. For smaller benchtop mills, r is probably the most common spindle type. And that means they accept tool holders that have ends that look like this. These are all R8 tool holders, and every single one will fit in an R8 spindle, but there are some important things to consider before deciding which ones to fill your drawers with. If you got a bench mill with an R8 spindle, you probably also got a set of these R8 spring collets. The outside of the collets all have the same R8 geometry that'll fit into the spindle, but they're all different sizes on the inside to hold different size end mills. You install the collet directly into the spindle, and when you tighten the drawbar, it pulls the collet up into the spindle and tightly wedges it up against this taper, which causes the collet to tightly squeeze and grip the end mill. This is going to have very little run out, because the collet's the only thing between the machine spindle and the cutting tool. And it's more rigid than all the other tool holders because it's sitting right up close to the spindle nose. Like, pay attention to this stick out. All the other options stick out much further from the spindle face. And that's going to decrease the rigidity of the setup significantly, which isn't a good thing. And spring collets are also the cheapest option. So, if they're the cheapest, have the least run out, and are the most rigid, why not end the video right here? Well, there's one fatal flaw with spring collets, and it's that they're not what we call fixed tool holders. That means that the tool isn't fixed in the collet when it's not inside the spindle. It just slides around like this. So when you go to put the tool back into the spindle, you're going to have lost your Z position. And if you're using a manual mill, that's probably fine and spring collets are probably what you should use. But if you're running a CNC machine, losing your Z position every time you change a tool makes for a pretty miserable machining experience. So have a look at this thing. This is what's called an ER collet chuck, and it isn't the same as a collet. It uses a collet to grip the end mill, and these are called ER style collets, but the gripping is done inside the tool holder itself, not directly in the spindle like we saw with collets. When we tighten this nut, it pushes the ER collet into the taper, which creates the same kind of squeezing effect on the end mill as we saw with collets in the spindle. But this time the squeezing's done inside the tool holder, so when we take the tool out of the machine, it doesn't slide around. And that's really good, because we won't have to adjust the tool stick out in our CNC control every time we switch tools, right? Well, sort of. Check this out. Let's install it into the mill, tighten the drawbar to 20 foot-pounds, and throw an indicator on the bottom of the end mill. Now let's tighten the drawbar to 45 foot-pounds. See how the indicator moves a few thousands? What's happening is that as we're tightening the drawbar, we're pulling up hard on the tool holder, and we're actually wedging the taper further up into the spindle. So if you're not using a torque wrench to tighten your drawbar to the exact same preload every single time you load the tool in the spindle, your tool stick out can actually be different by several thousands. And if there's a five or six thousand step on the floor of a part, you'll notice it. Not only that, but with tools this small, I've got to take step downs in increments of one thousand. So being out by five is definitely blowing up that end mill. Another benefit of a collet chuck tool holder is that you can hold all kinds of different size tools in it. This particular collet chuck accepts ER32 collets, which themselves come in different sizes. So all of them will work, which isn't true for this next tool holder. This option is also a fixed R8 tool holder, but instead of using an ER collet to grip the end mill, it uses a set screw to push against a flat on the end mill to secure it inside the holder. And it isn't a terrible way to hold a tool. They generally build shorter than the collet chucks, so you'll gain a little rigidity. And they're also cheaper than collet chucks, so you're winning in a few ways, but there are a couple things I personally don't love about them. Unlike the collet chucks, you can't hold different size tools because there's no collet to switch out, so you're stuck with one size of end mill, and the end mills you choose gotta have this little flat on them, which narrows your selection of end mills. Now, you can just grind your own flat onto any end mill that doesn't already have one, but it's just more messing around, and I don't love it. Another shot against the set screw tool holder is the amount that the end mill sticks out of the holder is defined by the location of that flat on the end mill. So like, you can't slide this end mill further into the holder to get more rigidity or further out to gain more reach if you need it, like you can with collets or collet chucks. And again, you could just grind another flat into a spot that works for you, but I don't know. It's just more messing around and I don't love it. And these set screw holders are going to suffer from that same few thousandths repeatability issue because they have the same wedging problem as the collet chuck we looked at. Alright, if you're sitting there thinking I'm going somewhere with this, you'd be right. These are TTS tool holders made by Tormach. And if you can't tell, I absolutely love them for these smaller CNC mills. They are fixed tool holders. They don't suffer from that few thousandths of repeatability in Z. The tool changes many times faster than all the other options we looked at. And there are just so many different options of tool holding to choose from. But there's one little problem. 
These aren't R8 tool holders, so they won't just fit in our spindle. Not without an adapter, anyway. And that's what this is. It looks like a 3 quarter inch spring collet, but it isn't. If you look a little closer, it has this flat face that sits above the surface of the spindle nose. Unlike these collets that sort of stick out past the spindle face. But once this adapter's in the mill, it stays there, and you'll gain the ability to use every single TTS tool on your mill. Within the TTS family, you can also get those set screw holders and collet chucks, and there are also diamond engravers, rigid tapping heads, all kinds of these longer threaded arbors, shell mill and drill chuck arbors, boring heads, drill chucks, fly cutters, the list goes on. And you can also get other third-party TTS attachments, like this S5000 LED probe from Drewtronics. With this probe, you can obviously touch off and set your work coordinate offset very quickly with probing routines, but it also kind of turns your mill into a CMM. You can measure the size and position of all kinds of features on a part, and it's super useful if you're trying to copy an existing part accurately. So once that adapter is in our spindle, we can put a TTS tool holder in, tighten the drawbar by half a turn, and we're done. To take the tool out, you just crack the drawbar loose, and the tool comes out. With every single other tool holder we looked at, you've got to unthread the drawbar all the way out of the tool holder to take it out of the spindle. And that's a really big deal. I know it doesn't sound like it, but it is. It cuts the tool change down to like 20 seconds, and it's just so, so easy. And it gets better. TTS tool holders don't suffer from that few thou repeatability in Z every time you change a tool. I'm tightening this drawbar from 20 foot-pounds to 45 foot-pounds, just like we did with the collet chuck, and that indicator isn't moving. With this TTS setup, when you tighten the drawbar, it pulls up hard on that adapter collet, which both squeezes and pulls up on the TTS holder. But unlike all the other R8 tool holders that have this taper that wedges further into the spindle if you over-tighten it, the TTS tool holders have this big flat shoulder that sits square against the face of the spindle. And so, no matter how much you tighten the drawbar, that face isn't going to move up any further. And I wish they were, but Tormach isn't paying me to say any of this. I spent all my own money on the tooling in this video, and in my opinion, the TTS system is just the clear-cut winner. Is it the best in every single way? No. They're not going to be as rigid as running spring collets right in the spindle, and they're likely going to have a little bit more runout. but the joy I get from quickly and repeatedly being able to change out a whole variety of TTS tooling far surpasses anything else I care about. And if you have a CNC machine with an R8 spindle, I'm positive you're going to agree. If I had to choose just one TTS holder, it'd probably be the ER20 collet holder, because they make ER20 collets to hold every size of end mill between a sixteenth of an inch and half an inch, and that covers most of my needs. You can also get ER16 collet holders, which is one size down from the ER20, and they clamp a smaller range of end mill sizes, but they also build smaller, so if you need more clearance around your tool when you're machining, these can be useful. And you can also go up a size from the ER20 to an ER32 collet holder. And it's really big and chunky. I only use it to hold this shear hog because it's got a big three-quarter shank that I can't hold with an ER20. And this is the Tormach Superfly. It's a fly cutter that's used in facing operations. It removes a ton of material with an amazing surface finish, and I love it. But you can only use it in facing operations. Here's the TTS drill chuck. It's actually made of two different parts. There's the TTS side with a JT2 Jacobs taper, and then a keyless drill chuck that goes up to 3 8 on top of that. And here's the diamond engraver. Sadly, I broke the tip the very first day I got it, but I did get to do enough testing to know that it works well in aluminum and not so great in steel. It sort of scratches the steel and does leave a mark, but it's hard to see and not very deep. And there's two different springs you can order with these engravers. Definitely get the heavier spring. So that's about it. I hope you found this tool holding ramble helpful. And I hope you watch this video before going too far down the wrong tool holding path. But if you're already down that path, you're probably also already frustrated by the shortcomings of collets and other RA tool holders. So if you can, do yourself a big favor and give the TTS system a try. And if you think I'm wrong about any of this, please leave a comment. I'd be really curious to hear why you don't think the TTS system is the best option for tool holding on a CNC mill with an R8 spindle. Thanks for watching guys, see you in the next one.